did Samsung send me a lemon or a pre-production unit of the Samsung Galaxy M33 5G? Because it doesn't seem right to me. But anyway, uh, this is the Galaxy M33. This is the Galaxy M33 review. Uh, it's got 5G uh, powered by an Exynos 1280 processor. Uh, and that gives it 5G. It's 5 nanometer process. So it should be promising, right? Um, and we got a 120 hertz TFT display. Unfortunately, it's not AMOLED, but 120 hertz anyway. We do have a uh, Infinity U cutout or like a dewdrop notch for the 8 megapixel selfie camera. At the back, we have a 50 megapixel main camera, 5 megapixel ultra wide. 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensor. This is a brown color. It seems more bronze, uh, but there you go. It's priced at around 19,900, but generally I see it at about 15,000 plus pesos. So uh, that goes to US dollar 300 to about 400 US dollars. Um, we have a headphone jack, a dedicated micro SD card slot dual sim 5g capabilities and 5000 milliamp hour batteries so why would i call this a lemon or a pre-production unit well we will find out in the review but before we get to that like comment and subscribe see you in the review All right, guys, so this is the Samsung Galaxy M33 5G. This is a 6 gig RAM variant, but the one in the Philippines and in most countries uh, for the price points I mentioned will have 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. This is the 120 hertz TFT display here, 1080. I believe it's 2408 by 1080. Uh, we'll talk about it in just a bit. Uh, the back is a bronze brown color. This is officially, I believe, the brown color. Um, it actually looks nice, but it is a bit fingerprint uh, smudgy. Now, let's talk about the box, which I do not have. Samsung sent us the unit only. The box does not have the charger, headphones, or a optional case you know sometimes samsung gives you a case uh, it also does not come with a pre-installed screen protector the box comes with a uh, sim ejector tool and i believe a usb type c to type c cable for charging a little bit uh lean on the accessories out of the box but uh we'll see what else we can talk about all right, let's get towards the design of the Samsung Galaxy M33 5G. This, as you can see in front, is a 6.6 inch, uh, 2408 by 1080, 120 hertz TFT display. It is unfortunately not AMOLED. The colors are decent. The brightness gets decent as well. I have no complaints. I'm not the biggest proponent for AMOLED here, but I have to admit, Samsung's previous phones from this mid-range segment have had AMOLED displays before, so I don't really know why we're on TFT now. Uh, but it's not the worst display in the world. I think it's pretty nice. It's not as vibrant as an AMOLED, of course. We also don't have the deep blacks of AMOLED. All right, on top we have a uh, Infinity U cutout. I wish it was an Infinity O, so it doesn't look old uh, style, but it is an Infinity U cutout for the 8 megapixel selfie camera. It doesn't look ugly, this entire front fascia of the phone. Uh, we do have a chin at the bottom because TFT displays generally need the chin. Um, and on the left side, we do have the SIM tray with three, three slots, two for SIM, one for a dedicated micro sd so that's very nice on top we have a, a pinhole for the microphone and on the right side we do have a pretty decent fingerprint scanner volume rocker and that's about it on the bottom we have a nicely added headphone jack type c port for charging and data transfer and the single bottom firing speaker now looking at the back we do have this nice color bronze. I do like this color. And even though this is plastic on the back, I do feel like it's a nice design and it's a nice feel. Sorry, my my phone is making sounds. Uh, Samsung logo there. Nothing else down here with like uh, IMEI or other small fine print making it a nice looking clean back. The 
camera module here has four cameras and an LED flash. I do like the design here. There's a, there's a curved rise going to the camera module, not a sharp angular thing that will scratch your fingernails or fingers, uh, including the sides also. It's a nice curve to keep a hold of the phone. This is a 5000 milliamp hour battery inside and it's not a bad looking phone. It's not thick. It's not heavy. Um, I do like this design. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good even though it holds fingerprints quite a lot. All right, so this is the user interface of the Galaxy M33. Let's try the fingerprint first. It's all right. It's pretty good. Sometimes it takes like an extra second but in my opinion, this fingerprint is quite good. Let's let's try the face unlock. There we go. That's the face unlock. Try it again. Pretty good. It still, still sort of misses a beat, like a half beat. But those unlocks are fast enough for me and a lot of people. So I'll give it a pass. Now, since this is a TFT display, there is no always on display option when you turn off the display. So unfortunately, we lose that feature because we are on a TFT display. Now, this is the user interface. It's One UI 4.1 Android 12. And I have to admit, Samsung is still top of the game when it comes to Samsung uh, to Android user interfaces. I know I used to be a big stock Android Google enthusiast, but Google has been dropping the ball when it comes to features and uh, multitasking capabilities and other things. So I'm a big Samsung fan now, especially since they do update their phones quite regularly. So I do like it. All right. So let's talk about the first boot or bloatware or ads possibility of the M33. There are none pretty much. You do get some Microsoft apps at the start. You do get uh, Facebook, Netflix, and Spotify, which aren't exactly worst apps in the world and yeah the no more bloatware no ads in the in user interface except for the game launcher here which gives you an ad on the top of the screen some of the high-end samsung's like my fold here do not get that ad but yeah it's where samsung sort of gets a little bit of money back for adding that ad all right, as far as Antutu score goes, we have about 400,000. It can get higher if I free up some storage, but that's about it, 400,000, 420 maybe. Um, I've ha I have found a problem with Netflix here. Um, it, Netflix was working originally, but after like a few, like, like a month, it says it's no longer compatible. So I can't, you know, even though this uh, app, uh, this device has Widevine L1 support, Netflix isn't supported anymore. I don't know. This is why I think I've got a lemon of a unit for some reason or a pre-production unit. I cannot explain that. So there you go. It does have most of the gyro and uh, orientation sensors that you would need, magnetic sensor and stuff like that. So you're covered when it comes to like gyroscope gaming and stuff. All right. So I talked about how great the user interface is, the features and all that, the the capabilities and all the lack of bloatware. Now, in terms of smoothness, this is pretty smooth. 120 hertz is very nice as well. Um, though when launching apps, it takes maybe an extra half beat or a beat just to load the app. Uh, I feel like this should be slightly faster. Like some apps should load slightly faster. Maybe I'm used to like, more powerful processors? I don't know. Mid-range should give us uh, a lot more power than this. The Exynos 1280, I don't know how how uh, good it is right now. It, it doesn't seem like it's giving me mid-range power right now in terms of quality of speed and whatnot of launching apps. But just navigating the interface is pretty fast and smooth at 120 hertz. But like I said, loading apps slightly slower than I would expect from a mid-range phone. All right, let's talk about the gaming capabilities and performance of the Galaxy M33 5G. Uh, we do have gaming tests on our extras channel if you want to watch all of them. Uh, but Call of Duty, for example, was a solid 60 FPS most times. I set the settings to low graphics and max FPS. Now, Call of Duty is only limited to 60 FPS all the time, but uh, Call of uh, League of Legends Wild Rift was actually limited to 60 FPS. Now, that's weird because uh, Wild Rift should support 
high refresh rates. And on some devices with 120 hertz, I've been able to set 120 hertz on uh, League of Legends Wild Rift. But on the M33, it stuck to maximum 60 hertz, 60 FPS. Uh, but it did perform quite well. And uh, from my average, I'd say I got 54 FPS average with the highest League of Legends Wild Rift setting. So pretty decent, but not 120 hertz. Now, PUBG Mobile, uh, we could not get more than 30 FPS. We were set to graphics at smooth and FPS to high. We could not pick a higher frame rate than 30. Uh, and we played and we got a stable 27 to 30 FPS. Pretty decent for PUBG Mobile. Mobile Legends. Okay, so Mobile Legends, we got about uh, 52 FPS average on medium. So perfectly playable. I don't think uh, Mobile Legends supports more than 60 FPS. So 52 FPS average is quite nice. Now, kind of lastly, uh, we got to talk about Genshin Impact. Um, I don't know how or why, because the other games seem to work quite nicely, but Genshin Impact, even at the lowest setting, really chugs. Really, really chugs. So we played Genshin Impact at the lowest setting, 60 FPS. It's very slow. It barely hit 18 frames per second on somewhat busy areas. Um, it goes below 10 FPS in, in heavy combat. Um, it's, it's kind of unplayable on Genshin Impact. I don't know what the Exynos 1280 uh, is doing or is there any problem there. Or maybe Genshin Impact is just dem too demanding as a game. Uh, maybe the 1280 is not as, as powerful as we would want it to be. And like I said, it's just not on par with other mid-range phones because some mid-range phones in this price point have flagship processors some of them have way better genshin impact performance even though they're running like a uh, helio g80 or something so exynos 1280 doesn't seem to perform that well when it comes to genshin impact at least but it's a bit of a bummer nonetheless now, in terms of war um, um, temperature stuff, once you're playing, uh, the back does get warm. I got it to about 42 degrees at the back uh, after about 10 minutes. It gets a little sweaty at the back there. And not the best for long gaming sessions, this phone. But it does maintain. I managed to play uh, 30 minutes and whatnot. And I don't think it grows even higher than that. I think the thermal management or the... The, the thermal throttle does a pretty good job. It does actually throttle, though. Uh, testing it with CPU throttling test, it goes down to 70% performance in f 15 minutes. So maybe that's how it can uh, go long uh, gaming sessions. But, you know, your performance is going to drop to 70%. So, yeah. Gaming performance, not as I would like to be in this heavily competitive mid-range segment all right so let's talk about the camera quality of the samsung galaxy m33 5g i'm trying to keep this upbeat because well i cannot be upbeat about the camera quality oh boy i hope samsung still lends me phones after they see this review because oof it ain't good all right so let's get this over with um the Samsung Galaxy M33 5G has disappointing camera quality. It's got a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 5 megapixel ultra wide. Who puts a 5 megapixel ultra wide sensor in a mid range device that almost costs 400 US dollars? I have no idea. Anyway, um, disappointing. Uh, we got a 2 megapixel micro, 2 megapixel depth. I'm not going to complain about those. Now, they seem like they're budget phone camera quality, but actually a, a couple year old budget phone cameras still look better than this. I will show you in just a bit. Okay. Bye. 
So the main sensor quality looks good only on the phone screen because it's small, 6.6 .6 inch. When you look closer, it has a lot of noise, even in bright conditions. In bright, in, in 4 p.m. sunlight, good visibility. I took a photo of a, a Jimny, a, no, a, a Suzuki Jimny. The, the blue color on the side is super grainy and noisy. All right, worse, the edges of the main sensors seem like they had Vaseline smeared on the sides. So it looks super like blurry around the sides. I have no idea why. Um, now it, it is pretty sharp in the middle, so it looks good until you look at the sides. Okay, the ultra wide. Well, what can you expect from a five megapixel camera in 2022? It's it's grainy. It's it's watercolor. It's kind of very dark too. Anyway, um, night mode and on both sensors have a pretty de pretty crazy gray cast. Saturation drops a little bit. Now, as you would probably expect, 50 megapixel camera main and 5 megapixel ultra wide. There's a significant difference in color quality uh, and and low light performance between them and uh you it's almost seems like they're from different phones altogether i know it doesn't really matter when you when you take photos with ultra wide and whatnot and that they don't match but it would be nice because you know the quality is the same you know now macro shots they're two megapixel they're very similar to other two megapixel macro sensors i've tried so i'm not going to complain about that but you would know that you can't really share two megapixel macro pictures unless they're just for um, educational purposes. You know, you're not going to get likes for that. All right, let's talk about the selfie. Selfies is eight megapixels. Uh, they're pretty noisy. They're sort of they have a gray cast on them. Uh, low saturation as well. Though, if you're doing portrait mode, the edge detection is pretty good. So Samsung has that done pretty well, at least. Now, video quality, it's better than the photos, actually, and generally usable, though 4K is not uh, electronically image stabilized. So I would suggest shooting 1080p um, because you would get electronic image stabilization. <laughs> I do like the fact that you can plug in an external microphone for vlogging. Um, and I do like the fact that it has a headphone jack as well. 
All right, so we are recording a selfie 1080p video with the Galaxy M33 right now. And I have connected an external microphone uh, to the headphone jack. So uh, the Samsung phones with headphone jacks have a certain advantage for vlogging uh, because you can plug a headset combo and use the headset's microphone as external microphone, potentially improving the audio quality of your video. The selfie video shoots 1080p with electronic image stabilization, though it's definitely a little bit more distracting the electronic image stabilization. All right. The slow motion uh, quality looks good though, so I have to give them props for decent slow motion quality. Now, some people will say, you know, you're you're picking on the M33 too much. Well, here's some comparisons. I will compare the Galaxy M33 side by side for you with the Coolpad Cool 20. These are the differences. The Coolpad Cool 20 is a fraction of the price, and yet it looks better to me. Now, uh, let, maybe that's a, uh, that's a weird example. Let's go to the ITEL Vision 2. This is a sub-5,000 peso phone. Now, in terms of what Samsung used to do when it comes to cameras, here are photos from the Samsung Galaxy M51 I reviewed, I think, a year and a half ago. These are amazing cameras. And when you put them side by side with a Galaxy M33, you will see exactly why I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed with this, with this phone. What, what, what happened to this, uh, this? We had a great camera on the M51. And, and keep in mind, we had the M32 last year with 64 megapixels and 8 megapixel ultra wide. Now we have 50 and 5. They actually downgraded the thing. Anyway, those are the comparisons. What do you think? You can clearly tell I'm not impressed. All right, let's bring it on back from the negative camera review onto the battery performance. We do have uh, about 11.5 hours work 3.0 on PC Mark uh, at half brightness. Uh, I get about a 1.5 days average. I couldn't count the screen on time so much. Um, and the 30 minute charging gives us from 0% to 51% at about 21 watts average the phone supports up to 25 watts but uh 21 is what i got off the cable so that's you know that's probably 25 watts with a little bit of loss okay so battery is good no complaints there uh it would have been nice if we got like 7000 milliamps like the previous um other devices like the m31 that i was talking about but 5000 milliamps is perfectly fine for today's smartphones all right, let's talk about the value proposition of the Galaxy M33 5G. Now, it doesn't have a charger, no headphones, uh, no case in the box, and no screen protector pre-installed. It does have the SIM removal tool and the charging cable. Samsung has been removing accessories from a lot of their devices, uh, including this one in 2022. So it's to be expected, and uh, I am not going to complain for if the product gives us a lot of value but the m33 uh, aside from 5g does not seem to have a good value proposition to me because uh something like the galaxy m32 last year gave us a 90 hertz amoled display versus today's tf2 tft 120 hertz we got 64 megapixel main and 8 megapixel ultra wide versus today's 50 megapixel main and 5 megapixel ultra wide and i believe M32 has had better image quality. I haven't tried it personally myself, but I can't imagine something else worse than the Galaxy M33s that I've seen. Anyway, it doesn't the M32 does not have 5G though, but 
It is cheaper by like 5,000 pesos right now. It launched at 13,000 something. And you get better camera, a Helio G80, which clearly can play Genshin Impact in mid settings, in at, at mid graphic settings. So got a power, you, you can see what I'm go where I'm going with this. The M32 is a better phone for me and a cheaper price than the M33, except the M33 has a 120 Hertz display. Sadly, it's TFT and it, it has 5G that, that pretty much it <sighs> comparing to Chinese uh, competition, the M33 cannot compete because a lot of the Chinese competition have flagship processors at 15,000, 20,000 pesos. The Chinese competition also have 120 Hertz AMOLED displays and will have significantly better cameras than this. Of course, the Chinese manufacturers have bloatware and ads. So that's a comparison there, but I can't give uh, M33 any points for losing all of the accessories as well. So I got to give value proposition a kind of low amount. All right, let's talk about the connectivity features of the Galaxy M33. I have to give them props for the decent 5G speeds. Has 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi with AC Wi-Fi, not AX yet, but AC is pretty good. Uh, Bluetooth 5.1 is good. Uh, connectivity on the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is good as well. Uh, and call quality is good. Not going to complain. Give it pretty good score. All right, so what is the conclusion of the uh, Galaxy m33 review well this is not what i expected from a mid-range samsung phone the cameras are really subpar you can actually see the low quality photos even from other tech reviewers but they don't call it out they just give it a positive review even though i can still see my comments there the smudginess the the darkness and whatnot and the gaming performance is weak Mid-ranger should be able to run Genshin Impact at the lowest settings or even mid settings. And the UI, uh, it isn't fast enough for a mid-ranger. And also, why do we get TFT versus an AMOLED display? We used to get AMOLEDs in the mid-range segment. And also, why isn't Netflix working? Did I get a, a lemon or a pre-production unit? Samsung, please let me know. Um, but anyway, the design of the battery, uh, the design is great. I'd say it's pretty good. The battery is good. Connectivity is good. And you do get a headphone jack. Very nice. And there's no bloatware. Another nice point. If you really wanted a Samsung mid-range phone, there are many better Samsung phones at this price point, including what I said, the Galaxy M32. Or just get like the M51. I really like the cameras of the M51. So just avoid this unless you really need 5G. If you're okay with some amount of bloatware, you don't have to buy a Samsung. You could try some one of the Chinese brands. We get gaming focused phones from China Chinese brands at under 15,000 pesos or $300. Um, and they have flagship processors, albeit you know, one or two years older, but they have flagship process. If you go 20,000, 25,000, we get current generation flagship processors as well. So there is no excuse here. Of course, those are Chinese brands because, um, you know, the, the mainline brands only give us flagship processors at about 35,000 pesos minimum. Anyway, um, Mid-range uh, Chinese phones also have 120 hertz AMOLED displays and clearly, clearly better cameras than the M33. So I really have no idea why this is like this. <laughs> anyway, the Galaxy M33, not good for high-end games, not good cameras. It's a bit tough to recommend. Sadly, Samsung... I hope you would still rem <laughs> lend me units after this review. I uh, hope you, uh, you know, maybe don't even watch this. <laughs> but anyway, for all of my viewers out there, thank you for watching. Uh, I try to keep as honest as possible when it comes to reviewing these products. And I cannot find 
the the camera quality people have been extolling about this M33. Um, Samsung lent this unit for review, uh, not getting paid and everything. Um, I will be returning this very, very soon. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.